For those of you who don't know, Israel is a country in the Middle East doing a lot of no-no things like genocide and more no-no things like having an apartheid state. And when you're doing genocide in your apartheid state to millions of Palestinians that are living under occupation, turns out sometimes you end up triple tapping some of the aid workers that are trying to desperately bring in much needed food to the people that you're genociding and that's precisely what happened yesterday do you just accept israel as a nation i did not i'm just telling you how it is i do not accept isn't real and the things that isn't real does but i do have to cover what isn't real is doing because the genocide is real that's what's going on world Central Kitchen is an aid organization that was allowed by Isn't Real to operate inside of Gaza. They were bringing in humanitarian aid by water, and they had a lot of foreign aid workers in it, in this organization. It's the famous chef's uh, organization, Jose Andres. They were bringing in food to the Palestinians that Israel was marking okay genociding in order for them to be able to do this they literally told isn't real what their route is just understanding something here is important okay these guys gave their route to the israeli government when they were doing this convoy they were operating at the behest of the israeli government but the problem is the israeli government is like a feral animal and sometimes goes hot and cold and decides you know what actually we do want to kill you guys which is precisely what they did they literally triple tapped aid workers on a predetermined route that they had offered to the aid workers triple tapped them not once it wasn't like one strike oopsie it was a first strike then they got out of the car the survivors got into the second car they striked it again and again it is misleading to describe the world central kitchen killing as an airstrike singular in actual fact three vehicles were targeted with the first and last being over 2.4 kilometers apart the idf decided to make three not one not two three targeted strikes they were doing the same drone that we watched but this time designated aid workers the horrifying details emerging about world central kitchen massacre the convoy was struck three times in succession with the drone chasing the wounded aid workers from vehicle to vehicle to make sure that they were all killed no legit pretext and precise coordination with the idf after the first strike world central kitchen as far as i understand literally informed the idf that they had the wrong target the idf's early explanation regarding the killing of world central kitchen team is in per security sources speaking to haaretz before we get to the putative pretext for the attack they also disclose a harrowing detail the drone bombed the convoy three times in succession because the team survived one hit and tried taking cover in another vehicle then the survivors moved to a third and we're finished off there deliberate repeated targeting of a convoy making sure no one was left alive and this actually doesn't stack up with the alleged pretext now before you say no israel had the right target i agree with what you're trying to say yes they deliberately killed the aid convoy people okay they did what the f are you gonna do about it what is anyone gonna do about it israel gets to kill whoever the f they want to that's it and the world needs to suck it are you gonna complain what the f are we going to do the american government yesterday or over the weekend announced that they are giving 18 billion dollars of weapons jdams precision guided munitions and f-15s to israel after joe biden for the past two months have been like oh israel cut it out i called netanyahu a bad word the thing about Netanyahu's apology stating that the killing of workers was unintentional is that he basically admitted that they are deliberately bombing aid, a point which Zionists and Zionist adjacent supporters and propagandists repeatedly deny. Exactly. No, here's the thing. I talked to a lot of normies who are like, I love Israel. I don't get it. Like, I don't know what's going on. Who were horrified after October 7 and were like, oh, dude, if you defend Palestinians, you must be a terrorist. Not a lot of those dudes still have that opinion many months in. As a matter of fact, a lot of those dudes have gone back on that opinion. I'm not talking about people who are like very well read on this stuff. I'm talking about normies who literally just like kind of read the headlines, maybe have like a kind of a reactionary approach to news for the most part, as a matter of fact, like the type of people who are like, I love Israel. I have Jewish friends. Like that's the type of person who hasn't really put a lot of thought into it. You know what I mean? That's a person who's just like guided by feelings and reacts to shapes and colors. Israel is, has lost all of those people okay israel has completely lost those people and that's because they keep doing this and they do it so much that even some of the stuff that gets filtered through the mainstream media ends up frustrating people the joe rogan experience and the most critical viewers are like yeah dude this israel stuff is like pretty out of control maybe they should stop 
Do you remember back in October when there was a days long back and forth about whether or not Israel bombed a hospital? And at this point, they've destroyed literally every single hospital in Gaza. I feel like I'm going insane. I do remember that because that became a pivotal moment in my career as a fabulist and as a person who is a serial exaggerator, as a person who is a liar. Where are those people now? They got their hundreds of thousands of views off that. Where are those people now? I was right back then and I've been right. I was right for the past 10 years I've been covering this. You were new to it, so you were just like, oh, yeah, he must be wrong about this. It is a straight up circle jerk of losers that are constantly trying to farm drama off of an active ethnic cleansing campaign that is unfolding in front of our eyes. And they openly admit that they don't know anything. They openly admit that they don't know. Come on, dude. It's ridiculous. Uh, we do not target hospitals. Let's be clear. Israel does not target hospitals. Yeah. Remember that? Let us be clear. Israel does not target hospitals. Unless there are Hamas patients. Hamas patients. Come on, guys. Anyone who captured that moment and thought it was far-fetched for someone like myself to say Israel undoubtedly had struck this hospital already. So the idea that this is going to be a a unique circumstance where there's an Islamic Jihad rocket that blew up. Like, ridiculous. They've blown up every hospital. They've literally blown up every hospital. They sieged Al-Shifa again and again. Was I a future seer? Was I gifted with future sight? Is that what it was? No, it's because I've covered the for years. I don't have precog. I just know what Israel does and what Israel has done and what their capabilities are. Anyway, there's no reason to like relitigate it too much, but just remember that. Just remember how many dickheads just moved on because for them, this is not like a real situation at all. It's just something that they're watching. It's something that they're watching from afar and they just want like drama. Drama makes them more interested. It's like someone who doesn't appreciate sports for what it is and likes sports gambling. Okay. Gambling makes it interesting to watch the sports. Drama makes it interesting to follow the actual politics. Yeah. World Central Kitchen has stopped their operation in Gaza right now and a ship was already turned around back to Cyprus. Israel achieved their objective with the triple tap. And it's not that they just like, they killed an American, they killed an Australian, they killed a British citizen, they killed multiple British citizens, if I'm not mistaken. They killed a Polish citizen. One of the people that got shot at was an era. It was an American. American, I believe that worked for or Australian that worked for an era one or the other an era is one of the organizations that I funded remember when we raised 1.3 million dollars it was an era it was one of the organizations it was a Palestinian Red Crescent it was an era it was a Palestinian Children's Relief Fund and it was medical aid for Palestine those were the four organizations I funded one of them was an era and it's a great organization they've been working on the ground literally getting shot at and for the record i just i hope you understand something israel has been murking aid workers non-stop since day one these are just foreign aid workers that they killed in succession that's why it's like a big deal kind of but it won't be a big deal that's the other part it's not a big deal at all because it's every day it's every day it's every goddamn day and they get away with it every goddamn day is israel worse than russia russia is a foreign adversary and as a foreign adversary there's a lot they can't get away with okay russia is also horrible in its occupation of ukraine but there is a lot that russia cannot get away with at least without global scrutiny israel has all the global scrutiny and yet nobody does anything about it that's the difference i was listening to the npr politics podcast do a deep dive into why war crime investigations can be so complicated. Let me tell you what wasn't complicated, though. War crime investigations when Russia killed a U.S. citizen in Ukraine. That was not complicated at all. The American government acted almost instantly, immediately launched a war crime investigation. The American attorney general was on board, and they should be. It makes sense. Why shouldn't they? They should protect U.S. citizens. That's the goal, right? That's the job. Where the is that same energy for Israel. Israel's interests are more important than the American citizens being killed, that's for sure. This is not the first time Israel's killed Americans, okay? They bulldozed Rachel Corey. That was in like 2002, and they made jokes about it ever since. They never gave it up. 2003, sorry. They killed Shireen Abu Akhlek, who was an American legal permanent resident. They sniped her. What's happening in Israel-Palestine is not a war, and it's not a civil war. It's a genocide, okay? It's not a civil war. It is not a war at all. It's just a genocide. It is an ethnic cleansing campaign. I disagree with your take because with all means necessary, Israel has the right to defend itself. No, it doesn't. Israel does not have a right to defend itself. 
himself as a belligerent occupier under international law. There is no defensive genocide. Because the team survived one hit and tried taking and cover another vehicle, then the survives moved to a third and were finished off there. Deliberate repeated targeting of a convoy, making sure no one was left alive. And this actually doesn't stack up with the alleged pretext. According to sources acquainted with the details of the incident, the operation room in charge of securing the route identified an armed person on the truck and suspected this was a terrorist. By the time preparations were made for the attack, the truck arrived at the warehouse together with the three WKC vehicles, World Kitchen vehicles, carrying seven volunteers. Minutes later, the three vehicles left the warehouse without the truck on which an armed person was allegedly sighted. The cars traveled on a route already confirmed by WKC by the IDF. The IDF had confirmed the route. They knew who the these guys were the idea was also made aware of the timing of this particular convoy why are we so mad today baby how can you not be mad how can you not be mad dude like i don't know i i, I mean yeah i'm mad I, I think you should probably be mad too what the the genocide alone is obviously maddening and very frustrating but then on top of that the, to add insult to injury the arrogance that you hear from dudes who want to defend Israel's genocide is so bad. It's doubly frustrating. Like, people aren't even doing the it's complicated anymore, which is already frustrating to begin with. It's, it's not complicated unless you're an idiot. At this point, like, saying it's complicated is just a way to try to be like, oh, I just don't want to talk about it because I want to defend Israel. I want to defend Israel's genocide. When it comes to Israel-Palestine, there's a lot of misinformation because many people trust mainstream sources and the mainstream media has always been really bad on this okay historically they've just been bad on this issue because it is a state department position that we have unconditional support for israel even to this day you will rarely ever if at all hear that israel is an apartheid state out of any of the mainstream outlets which one of them has openly stated that israel is an apartheid none it's propaganda it is a lie by omission as a matter of fact mainstream media will oftentimes go against that narrative and will create counter propaganda counter narratives against that reality gaza may be apartheid but hamas is back it's not gaza that is like the most glaring obvious example of apartheid it's the west bank which once again famously many people don't talk about at all gaza as it stands now is withstanding a genocidal ethnic cleansing campaign west bank is an apartheid gaza is or was an open-air prison the West Bank still is an apartheid. P.S. I don't have anything against you just speaking my mind, and I actually appreciate your opinions. Listen to my words, okay? The least you can do is educate yourself on this. Just here, just read the Betselem apartheid report. I'm giving you an Israeli human rights organization. Here it is, a regime of Jewish supremacy from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. This is apartheid, okay? This will change your mind, hopefully. It puts into words what you see and what you don't see and what you take for granted. Once you start there and you develop the foundation and you have the knowledge that it is an apartheid, you can continue thinking logically beyond it. If an apartheid is happening, if an apartheid exists, then of course people are going to resist to it. And slowly but surely, that resistance as the apartheid and the violence it takes to maintain said apartheid gets worse and worse, the resistance is going to be worse and worse and more violent. This chatter ain't gonna read. We are six months into a genocide. He's not changing his mind. I am not going to leave someone and operate under the assumption that like they are just simply not interested if i personally thought that then i wouldn't do what i'm doing now i wouldn't do what i'm doing every day you don't know that you might have that approach i don't okay so just let me do my own thing there are plenty of people who probably have that exact same approach that that chatter has and 100 of them read this article and change their mind or at least like start the journey of changing the mind on this then that's an overall dub for me stop gatekeeping leftism so the idf was also made aware of the timing of this particular convoy at some point while convoy was traveling on the authorized route the operations room ordered the drone operator to strike one of the vehicles some passengers were seen leaving the struck in vehicle and moving to the other two they had time to alert superiors that they had been attacked but seconds later were struck by a second missile they began moving wounded to the third car and that's when the third missile hit. All seven volunteers were killed. That's from Haaretz's article, by the way. Before you go, Hassan, you're reading Twitter feeds or whatever. This is Dimi Ryder. He is the co-founder of 972 Magazine. 972 Magazine is an Israeli magazine that has done phenomenal investigative reporting, specifically talking about Israel's AI targeting protocols, the gospel, if you remember. So this isn't some random 
with a Twitter thread. This is a investigative reporter, an Israeli investigative reporter, Israeli British investigative reporter talking about a Haaretz article. Just so you understand, I feel the need to like constantly defend myself and my sources, but it's important. Let's talk about Benjamin Netanyahu's response. Like we talked about Israel triple tap the food aid workers who had been coordinating with the IDF on their movements. There's zero chance this wasn't intentional. Another brazen war crime. So what did Benjamin Netanyahu have to say about it? Oh, that's right. He said, my bad happens. And I'm not even joking when I say this. It sounds ridiculous. It sounds like this can't be real. Like no one can be this callous because why wouldn't they be this callous? Absolutely zero people can rain Israel in. Yeah, and he was smirking while he said it too. Where hold on, I want to show you the video I saw. It is like pure evil, okay? Here he is, Satan Yahoo. <laughs> He's saying, unfortunately, a tragic instance of our forces unintentionally harming innocent people in the Gaza Strip. It happens in war. We'll investigate it. We're in contact with the governments, and we will do everything so that it doesn't happen again. Like, bro, what the f*** is happening here? Like, at least have the decency to look sad, you know what I mean? At least have the decency to look sad while you're f saying shit happens. Sorry, we murked a bunch of f foreign aid workers I guess it's not for the American audience because he is uh spitting in Hebrew here so that's maybe why he he's got the smirk on you know as we have talked about before time and time again there are two different types of communication coming out of Israel you have the Hebrew stuff for the Israeli audience so it has a very different vibe to it overall and you have the English coverage whenever Benjamin Netanyahu is speaking in English he has a very different tone. When he's speaking in Hebrew, is also very different. He's smiling because first he talks about his operation and talks briefly about the incident. Yeah, he's happy his hernia surgery was successful. Yeah, he was put under for a little bit. And of course, nothing bad happened to him because nothing bad happens to evil people. All right, let's watch CNN coverage in this now. Uh, that's right. In fact, we've just been hearing uh, from the IDF, Eleni, saying that its top general is personally going to review uh, the information as it comes in as part of what's been described to us as the high level probe uh, that is being launched to try and figure out what went on. As you say, according to World Central Kitchen, this was a convoy in a deconflicted part of Gaza. It had been delivering a hundred tons of aid uh, to a warehouse. The convoy was then leaving uh, when it was hit. And when you look at those pictures of the aftermath. How could this have happened? I'm shocked personally that the country whose military practices involve shooting unarmed white flag waving Israeli hostages because they weren't sufficiently in the moment looking I guess uh, Israeli enough even though they were speaking in Hebrew that country ended up deliberately targeting a humanitarian aid convoy that it allowed to operate that's crazy very shocking a convoy that was struck three times over two kilometers as people ran from one car to the next and also as fast as they possibly could that this was the wrong convoy that they were hitting that will now be the subject of an investigation by the idf yeah dude we investigated ourselves and found no wrongdoing of course hey by the way before people go like how could they have done this i mean it's probably a accident it's probably an accident let me explain something to you okay here is a photo of one of the cars that got melted what does that say next to the impact site oh that's right it says world central kitchen unintentionals that dropped the missile 300 feet away and shrapnel hit you not a direct hit no there is no unintentional israel is correct when they openly state that they know where every missile lands israel knows where every missile lands remember after the great march of return the israeli officials openly said we know where every sniper rifle bullet lands every bullet is accounted for and then they had to delete that tweet okay why did they have to delete that tweet because they were like oh looks bad that we were just like straight up wounding children with snipers there is no defense for israel there is no defense whatsoever wait updated stuff here what a few follow-up points the stuff in my thread is not the official position of the israeli government and army the official position per benjamin Netanyahu is happens war as hell this thread is a military source speaking unauthorized to haaretz and that story is such bs falls apart so readily on its own terms i'm going to guess it's not top brass cover story either it's more likely what israelis call kastach 
acronym for covering your own ass cooked up directly by drone operators and their immediate commanders. Let's revisit. We saw a truck go into the WKC warehouse and we thought we saw someone on it who might have been armed. So we decided to kill him. But by the time we got around to it, other cars left the warehouse. So we hit one of those instead and then another and then another. So even if they're not lying, the question is, you definitely saw a weapon. No, dude. Was he a high value Intel driven target or just someone who looks sort of armed? Maybe the latter. Were there any soldiers in the vicinity threatened by the presence of maybe gunmen? But you had a visual on your target. No, but you had a visual on the truck he rode. No, you had an unconfirmed visual of someone armed later. So you knowingly bombed other cars nearby. They knew was a very realistic possibility. If they don't do that, add to that in the war room where the decision strike was supposedly made. Sounds fancy, but with the van and screens really is the war room in charge of securing that exact route. So all the units on the field uh, that day were expecting the convoy. And finally, added to the IDF has been flaunting its close collaboration with WKC or its own propaganda purposes. Specifically, look, aid is getting to the strip. And also, look, we don't need UNRWA. You get one of the least plausible storylines in the entire war, frankly. Normally, I go with a cock up over conspiracy. And frankly, the story of IDF deliberately luring WCK into Gaza only to bomb it as an example to other aid orgs doesn't stack up. Much simpler to not let them in. But cock up doesn't make sense either. If the war room securing the route is the war room in charge of the drone strike, there isn't much wiggle room for miscommunication, especially considering the time factor, the visuals, the fact that W. WCK have been operating in the area for weeks. So what's the third option? If I had to speculate, I'd say it's a unit or a cluster of units who've gone rogue. Not rogue in an open insurrection kind of way, just rogue as in, sorry, sir, what? Don't copy. They killed the aid workers either for shits and giggles or because, like many Israelis, they believe it doesn't make sense to feed the people you're fighting if you want to win the war. I think that this is the most plausible explanation. And by the way, they most likely will not get punished too. I mean, they might, some might, maybe a light wrist tap because they don't give it it's in that same direction. What was their reasoning that this wasn't an approved assassination mission? I think Dimmy brings up a really good point. Why the f would they let the WCK operate for a month only to do this targeted assassination after one month of working. They could have done it one months ago in the beginning. Two, they could have just not let WCK operate at all. I think he brought up really good points, really good, really strong points. I think it's more so that they just don't care if these things happen as long as there is not a lot of massive backlash. The problem is in a sea of genocidal actions, sometimes this kind of does get a lot of coverage. So the people operating the drones probably did not foresee this getting this level of coverage. So they thought, yeah, we'll get away with it. Look at Shifa. Also, why shouldn't they feel this way? Put yourself in the shoes of a dude that thinks they're fighting this righteous war of cleansing the barbarian hordes that came, raped your family and beheaded your babies. Not that it's not real, but it doesn't matter. Like that's the way they're seeing it. And also beyond that, the precedent is that those violent actions that you have engaged in for the past six months has barely made a dent. It's not like America has gone, all right, we're done. No more aid. So your commanders aren't like telling you to change your rules of engagement. Like top brass is not telling you to change your rules of engagement. It's just open up on whoever the you want to. And there's no repercussion, no accountability. Why wouldn't you do it in a moment where you're just like, yeah, these guys, they're feeding these barbarians that are barbarian rapists that are killing our families. They believe that it doesn't make sense to feed the people you're fighting, that eight orgs are all anti-Semites, or they were annoyed at top brass, or they were bored, or they wanted revenge. Now, this scenario is not suggesting these are bad apples, and the IDF on the whole would never do that. IDF on the whole killed 30,000 people in a half year. IDF would, could, and does do much worse. But in this case, the IDF is as a disciplined, cohesive actor, had every incentive to not kill Western aid workers, and yet a unit, not trigger-happy soldiers but a unit did, which suggests that the IDF may actually not be a disciplined, cohesive, coherent actor anymore. Not just when it's caught by surprise, it just structurally isn't, and that's the extra scary. It's absolutely intentional. No, the intentionality of that one unit is not what we're talking about. Obviously, they intentionally killed these people. We're not saying it was an accident. The, this goes beyond it, though, because the IDF does, to a certain degree, care about like uh, not having headlines like this. So I think that it's more so... Um, uh, it's like cops that kill black people, okay? They're like, what do you mean? I was killing black people left and right. Why the f this one that relevant? It's like George Floyd. Cops can't understand it. Do you not get it? Cops literally are like, what the f what, what do you mean I can't kill black people now? What, what the f It's the same principle. None of these people had arms. None of them were engaged in combat. This is a blatant war crime. There's no way this mistake could happen. No, it is a war crime. No one is saying it's not a war crime. I'm telling you, when there is no f accountability whatsoever, yes, yeah, some units are going to be like, yeah, we're going to kill these workers, these aid workers.
And why are they giving aid to the barbarians? Remember, it's intentional. But I do think it spells a larger breakdown of the command structure. Or maybe they just didn't give a f because they didn't think people would cover it. They definitely intentionally targeted the convoy. That much is 100% a certainty. What they didn't realize was what kind of backlash would occur in the Western media. But it also goes back to what I mentioned. They've killed hundreds of aid workers so far. They just happen to be Palestinian aid workers, so nobody gave a Anyhow, I would love to see someone pull a Crystal Grozev, Bellingcat, and extract the names of whoever held the joystick or whoever helped coordinate the strike. Unlikely, of course, but we're long overdue for public individual accountability for ground level actors. And here we go. Several new military sources speak to Haaretz. The commanders, plural, and units, plural, acted in contravention of both overall instructions and orders. Says one IDF intelligence source, the general staff know exactly why WCK were bombed. Because in the strip, everyone does whatever they like. It's unclear whether the commanders asked for more senior officers' permission to target the convoy, as they were meant to be doing doing per standing orders. The same sources dismissed the line taken by the chief of staff. Hertzi Halevi and Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, who suggested the bombing was a result of coordination issues. This has nothing to do with coordination. They can set up another 20 coordination hubs, but if someone doesn't put an end to how some forces in the strip have been operating, we'll see this happen time and time again. End quote. So that's the well-oiled machine, according to Benny Man Morris. It is well-oiled. Well-oiled. It's well-oiled to do one thing, ethnic cleansing. And because the modus operandi of the Israeli government and the Israeli military is ethnic cleansing, so far so good. But sometimes you do a little bit of too much ethnic cleansing and you all of a sudden do it to the wrong people for propaganda purposes. You do it to a group of humanitarian aid workers that are from, not from Palestine, but from Australia, from America, from England. And all of a sudden people go, whoa, 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 whoa what the f is going on here? Do you not understand? So yeah, multiple units in the IDF have gone completely out of control per IDF sources. Technically, it's not even out of control. I want to I wanna state this. It's not out of control because that out of control operation is what the IDF designed its forces to do in Gaza. Do you get what I'm trying to say here? Like this is a part of the normal operation. It's just that of course it's going to uh, happen like this. The point is if they were killing Palestinians as they have, because they have killed hundreds of Palestinians, hundreds of Palestinian aid workers so far, then it's business as usual. The point is that it's supposed to be uncontrollable chaos and ethnic cleansing. That's how you do ethnic cleansing. When you remove rules of engagement from your military operatives on the ground, of course they're going to be better killers. Your goal isn't to like actually save Palestinians. Your goal isn't even to save the Israeli hostages. They have proven that over and over again. Like they just literally don't care. They don't even care about the Israeli hostages. They shot them. They literally shot them. There's another Haaretz article. Israel created kill zones in Gaza. Anyone who crosses into them is shot. The Israeli army says 9,000 terrorists have been killed since the Gaza war began. Defense officials and soldiers, however, tell Haaretz that these are often civilians whose only crime was to cross an invisible lawn drawn by the IDF. When you look at this, you go, wow, this seems like a band of like roving militants killing people uncontrollably but this is the point because the overarching point is to do ethnic cleansing this is not a military operation this is mechanized death it's not a military operation with an actual goal or anything like that this is just mechanized death it's basically taking pot shots in your open air prison it's a meat grinder so that disorganized chaos is kind of the point and it is working as intended until it's not what i mean by this is it's working as intended when sniper drone snipers are shooting children inside of a hospital okay because it happens so frequently doesn't actually reach american news doesn't actually reach the western media that doesn't frustrate people in the same way sometimes you do a little bit too much of that mechanized death and you end up killing white people and that's when people go what the f are you doing it goes back to that same point that we discussed earlier 30,000 plus Palestinians slaughtered. This what happened to those aid workers has been happening to Palestinians 10 times over every single day. Anyway, here is John Kirby, who I hope every time he closes his eyes, the suffering Palestinian children haunt him. If he had a conscience, that is what would happen, but he does not have a conscience. He's the devil incarnate. It's very early hour that it was a deliberate strike, that they knew exactly what they were hitting, that they were hitting aid workers and did it on purpose. And there's no evidence of that. That's bull. Look, it is a clearly marked vehicle. They 100% given the details of the strike, which was a three-tap drone strike that spanned over 
three different cars over two kilometers. We know that that's bullshit. There's plenty of evidence the IDF knew it was striking a convoy. Their explanation is what they thought there might be an armed person in the convoy. Kirby should retract this. He is a gigantic piece of 64 days since Israeli forces killed six-year-old Hind Rajab, her family and medics sent to save her. I've asked the State Department repeatedly about this. Still no updated investigation, which, as I've said here, shouldn't take that long if it was a priority. Since Israeli forces attacked uh, Hind Rajab's family, killing her aunt, uncle, and cousins, leaving her trapped alone in her vehicle, we heard her pleas to the Red Crescent Society. Two medics were sent, all to be blown up allegedly by Israeli forces. I wanted to ask about the status of the inquiry into this, just because it seems if the Israeli government, you know, which seemingly does have a pretty sophisticated operation, is prioritizing this, and they don't already know which soldiers to interview, for instance, they have Red Crescent calls, time stamps, the location of the Red Crescent staff to, you know, uh, question and rely on, plenty of material to figure out who exactly to um, inquire with and to figure out who to hold accountable. Um, so I want to first ask about the status of this. Sure. So um, I think that question is appropriately directed to the government of Israel. I will say on behalf of the United States, we have made clear to them that we want that incident to be investigated. They have told us they are investigating it. Uh, it's our understanding that investigative investigation is not yet complete. You should direct questions to them about where it stands. But we want to see it completed as soon as possible. And as I said from this podium several no, days ago, uh, if accountability is appropriate, we want to be uh, we want to uh, uh, see accountability put in place. I'm going to follow up to that before the second one was uh, just similarly with regards to Al Jazeera cameraman Samir Abu uh, being left to bleed, bleed out. You know, while Israeli forces uh, uh, reportedly stalled medics from reaching him. Um, I know that previously you have said there's investigations into that. Is there any updates on? I don't have. I don't. I don't have any up updates. It's a lie. Anyone who believes this is the biggest gullible idiot on the planet. This man is speaking to an audience of like, uh, I guess, Destiny supporters and Brianna Wu, which I guess is redundant to say she is a Destiny dick rider. That's it. Like the only people I feel like listen to this and go, see, they're doing it, is literally like the Brianna Wu's of the world, so they can owned into oblivion by everyone on twitter whenever they make another banger 500 character tweet oh here is another one john kirby to a reporter who questions u.s military assistance to israel after the strike that killed the wck workers in gaza here it is you to send aid to israel without any conditions yes they have a right we're to not happen. sending aid to israel we're sending aid into gaza uh and that's weapons. how can they how can the u.s continue to send military well, military aid assistance Israel without any conditions is there no red line that no, no, you know we've had this we've had this discussion you and me quite a bit from up here um they're still under a viable threat of hamas um we're still going to make sure that they can defend themselves and that 7th of October doesn't happen again. That doesn't mean that it's a free pass, that, that, we, that we look the other way when something like this happens, or that we aren't and haven't since the beginning of the conflict urged the Israelis to be more precise, to be more careful, uh, and quite frankly to uh, increase the, num the, the amount of humanitarian assistance that gets in. Um, uh, you know. I haven't been asked about it yet, but I expect that I would be. You know, there was a discussion just yesterday with our Israeli counterparts about Rafah. Now, this one was done virtually. We expect it will be an in-person meeting here in, uh, in a week's time or so. Uh, but the whole reason to have that meeting was to talk about our concerns over a major ground operation in Rafah and to present viable alternatives for them to be more precise and more targeted. So the idea that we're... I don't know what to say about this. Like, he's just such a bad person. He is just a bad guy. That's it. Like, it's, it's that simple. NSC spokesperson said that there's no evidence that Israel deliberately struck and killed WCKA workers in Gaza, to which Will Miniger says, none of this is for U.S. consumption. They know no one can possibly believe this. This is demonstrating to our ally that should continue the massacre full steam ahead. That's what I think so, too. It's basically just the go-ahead that will defend you. We'll defend you unconditionally. We'll say that there's no evidence when there is very obvious evidence. You can even admit to the very obvious evidence, and it doesn't matter how do you not lose the pessimism is a great question it's because i've been doing this for 10 years and i've seen the attitude change dramatically in my lifetime obviously it comes with a major cost tens of thousands of palestinians now dead i recognize how much the attitude has shifted i didn't start paying attention to israel on october 8th maybe a lot of people opened up their eyes to the realities after and i'm not discounting your experience but if you have been aware of the situation and if you've been aware of the western reception to palestinian deaths and talking about israel's apartheid and israel's cruelty for the past 10 years it's impossible not to recognize how different things are now